Hey everyone, so in what could be the biggest moment since the war after October 7th began, uh, the IDF has annihilated Yahya Sinwar, who was the mastermind behind this attack. And not only that attack, but he's been responsible for the killing of thousands upon thousands of people, not only Israelis, but many people from many nations. And I know it's ordinarily the case that politicians from around the world will like to claim some sort of involvement, like they were participating in it and that they uh, get some of the glory in, in the celebration and in the victory of conquering over this evil. But watch Sky News over here. They can hardly contain themselves when going from world leader to world leader at each world leader trying to claim that they were somehow involved with this um, and watch, just watch the reaction. It's, it's, it's pretty entertaining. We begin this hour with a major development in the Middle East, though, that could change the course of the war. Israel has killed the leader of Hamas, Yahya Sinwar, in southern Gaza. It wasn't Mossad who got him, nor was it elite IDF fighters. A group of trainees and reservists took out enemy number one. He died as he lived like a coward, cowering in the shadows, hiding in buildings bombed off the back of his terror raid. It was a drone that captured these shots from his last moments alive. Look at him. He was no freedom fighter. He wasn't leader of any resistance. He was evil personified. He was also weak, so very, very weak. He knew that he was no match for soldiers, no match for an army. That's why he went for women, children, unarmed innocent men, teenagers, the elderly, Holocaust survivors, the sick, the disabled. And then he hid, using the bodies of his own people and those he'd kidnapped as human shields. He was no hero, no idol. I don't care who you are or what you believe, but nobody, no government, no religion, no so-called resistance could ever justify his reign of terror. And any attempts to do so, well, they're disgraceful. Prime Minister Netanyahu with this message for those still in Gaza. To the people of Gaza, I have a simple message. This war can end tomorrow. It can end if Hamas lays down its arms and returns our hostages. Followed by this. And Israel will guarantee the safety of all those who return our hostages. But to those who would harm our hostages, I have another message. Israel will hunt you down and bring you to justice. And after today, well, after this year, find me someone who doesn't believe him. You won't. World leaders, of course, reacted. Our prime minister said he was an enemy of the Israeli people and an enemy of peace-loving people everywhere. His death is a significant moment and can be a vital turning point in this devastating conflict. US Vice President Kamala Harris. In the past year, American special operations and intelligence personnel have worked closely with their Israeli counterparts to locate and track Sinwar and other Hamas leaders. And I commend their work. And I will say, to any terrorist who kills Americans, threatens the American people, or threatens our troops or our interests, know this, we will always bring you to justice. Now, I don't want to put a dampener on what is a very good news day for the world, but come on, we? We will always bring you to justice? Madam Vice President, you have done everything in your power to stop Israel from doing this. He was killed in Rafah. You told Prime Minister Netanyahu not to enter. In fact, you told the world. We have been clear in multiple conversations and in every way that any major military operation in Rafah would be a huge mistake. Let me tell you something, I have studied the maps you see the newscaster can like barely can barely hold her composure together? Let, let Keep watching. You weren't even present in Congress when Netanyahu spoke of how his country was fighting terror on behalf of all of us. You kept calling for a ceasefire, fully aware that the other side would never stop. 
So in other words, you demanded a proud nation of good, strong, resilient people lie down and die. You underestimated them like so many others in the world. You hindered this rather than helped. The president himself, remember, having recently blamed Netanyahu for the deaths of six hostages. Have a look. It's a good day for the world. We got, I told Keith Netanyahu to congratulate him getting sin war. He had a lot of blood in his hands. American blood, Israeli blood, and others. And uh, I told him that we were really pleased with his actions. And further that, uh, now's the time to move on. Move on to move forward to cease fire and God. You honestly could not make this stuff up if you tried. Our own foreign minister, directly to Israel, don't go into Rafa. So to the rest in the West and all of those countries who cowered, just like Sinwa did at the end, this victory is in spite of you, not in any way because of you. So make your speeches, say all the right things, hail the death of an evil terrorist, take credit if you must, but know within how you enabled him, you encouraged him, allowed his reign of terror to go far longer than it ever should have. Every single person who failed the most basic, the most basic test of moral clarity on October 7, killing kids, oh, complicated, raping women, What's the context? Burning people alive. Resistance? All those who joined a movement that glorified death, who marched in our streets waving their flags and chanting for more. Sinwar is responsible for every single death that has occurred in the Middle East since October 7 and many before. But his global cheer squad, wow, take a bow. You played a big part and most of you are too stupid to even realise. Where did it all go so wrong? Honestly, it's, it's a legitimate question. How did we get here? How did those we elected to lead us fail us so miserably? And how did that then seemingly filter down to the masses? No one ever had to make a choice between supporting Israel and supporting humanity. Standing up for innocent children goes hand in hand with destroying the terrorists who were killing them. October 7 was a dark, dark day. The most terrific thing I've witnessed in my lifetime. But do you know what's been even worse? The soul-destroying reaction of all those around the world who purport to stand for life, freedom, democracy and peace. <laughs> This won't just go down in history as the worst massacre of Jewish people since the Holocaust, but as the darkest day for leaders all over the world who were tested and the vast majority of whom failed miserably. Those who stood tall despite their relentless campaigns to do otherwise will be remembered. Those who shrunk and sold their souls will be as well for very different reasons. The earth is now a much safer place, thanks in no part to the majority of the Western world. This is an excellent monologue and really captures the vibe, the feeling that I think a lot of people feel uh, that are certainly focused on Israel's victory and the victory of good over evil, the stopping of terrorism from spreading across the globe. And, um, and she's absolutely right in, in methodically laying out the, the case in, in all of this. Uh, so let us all pray for the day that, that should come very soon where we see the ultimate eradication of all evil from all places, one by one, each terrorist and terrorist organization falling and um, victory being uh, for, for the good. And whether that is with the blessing and the encouragement and support of other leaders in the world, uh, may we see it either way. So uh, I, I will look forward to speaking with all of you uh, very soon. Uh, if, you, if you like this content, please uh, feel free to hit that subscribe button and look forward to talking with everyone very soon. Have a great day, everybody.